Interpretation of Example Datasets Now we will review the interpretation of a real-world dataset that incorporates some of the tips we've discussed. First, we will complete the pre-analysis quality check. 1. Does the recharge into the well represent formation discharge or filter pack discharge? Reviewing the data tab indicates that the estimated casein and filter pack volume for the initial fluid was about 2.26 gallons. Approximately 2 gallons of LNAPL was removed to initiate the test, so some filter pack discharge is anticipated. Reviewing the DVD on Figure 3 indicates an inflection point between the trends at a discharge rate of about 3.8 cubic feet per day and drawdown of about 0.4 feet. The second trend is linear and intersects the origin at zero discharge, zero drawdown. The second trend likely represents formation discharge and can be evaluated for LNAPL transmissivity. 2. Did the fluid elevations return to equilibrium? Reviewing the data tab indicates that the initial LNAPL thickness was 3.49 feet and the final thickness for the last monitoring point was 3.23 feet, or about 93% recovered. A review of Figure 7 indicates that the LNAPL thickness was still increasing and had not stabilized with three points on half of a log scale. The DVD on Figure 3 indicates a trend going through the origin. Ideally, monitoring would have continued until the full original thickness was observed and stabilized to verify that the initial fluid elevations were at equilibrium. 3. Did the initial fluid elevations represent equilibrium? The test was not monitored until full equilibrium at the end of the test to verify that there was no discrepancy between the initial and final fluid elevations. However, the trend line on the DVD, figure 3, is going through the origin with no drawdown adjustment. Therefore, the initial fluid elevations appear to have represented equilibrium. 4. Did the water table vary during the test? The initial water table depth was 29.39 feet. The water table was lowered to 29.48 feet by the initiation of the test, and it rose to 29.35 feet when monitoring was suspended. Since the variation in the water table elevation was due to the fluids removed to initiate the test, it is valid to analyze. The variation is accounted for by estimating the J ratio using figure four, using the data for formation discharge only. 5. Is data filtering acceptable, and if so, how should it be implemented? Data filtering is not required in this case. There are no data points with negative LNAPL drawdown or LNAPL discharge rate. The DVD on Figure 3 has an interpretable trend, though there is some scatter around that trend. Reviewing the data tab in Figure 7, there is some inconsistency in the change in thickness between data points. Refining the data set to represent consistent changes in LNAPL thickness would be technically acceptable and would likely reduce some of the data scatter. However, it is not necessary to analyze the test and would be unlikely to change the result significantly. We have now completed the pre-analysis quality check. Next, we will check the DVD on Figure 3 for periods of constant discharge. No periods of constant discharge are apparent, so there is no indication that the LNAPL is under confined or perched conditions. We can proceed with an unconfined analysis using the Bauer and Rice method. Reviewing our dataset, the filter pack discharge is ongoing until an LNAPL discharge rate of about 4 cubic feet per day. Reviewing the data tab, the time corresponding to this discharge rate is about 20 minutes into the test. So, the time cut should be set to 20 minutes to exclude these points from the analysis. The data in Figure 4 for the J ratio represents a consistent linear trend. The Bauer and Rice tab now indicates an LNAPL transmissivity of about 2.75 square feet per day. Reviewing the Bauer and Rice type curve tab indicates a consistent result. Some data scatter is apparent, but the type curve results are typically between 2 and 5 square feet per day. Our analysis is complete, and we would report a result of 2.75 square feet per day. 
Now we will review the interpretation of a second real-world dataset. First, we will complete the pre-analysis quality check. 1. Does the recharge into the well represent formation discharge or filter pack discharge? Reviewing the data tab indicates that the estimated casing and filter pack volume from the initial fluid levels was about 1.5 gallons. Only the initial casing LNAPL volume, 0.4 gallons of LNAPL, or about 25% of the total volume, was removed to initiate the test. Therefore, significant filter pack discharge of about 1.1 gallons is anticipated during the test. We calculate that 1.1 gallons represents about 1.64 feet of thickness in the well. We observe that the final thickness for the last monitoring point was 1.62 feet, indicating that the test may have only captured filter pack discharge into the well. Reviewing the DVD on Figure 3 indicates there is at least one initial data point with very high discharge and drawdown on a different trend than the other data points. A cursory review could suggest that this first data point represents filter pack discharge and the second trend represents formation discharge. However, since the trend on Figure 3 does not intersect the origin and the thickness exhibited in the well is still within the range anticipated from filter pack discharge, this dataset likely represents filter pack discharge and does not represent the transmissivity of the formation. The test is invalid and would need to be repeated.